This video is brought to you by Hugging Face. You just heard about Hugging Face, the company behind the largest repository of transformer architectures, the open source secret source behind conversational chat GPT or GitHub code generation copilot. And those are not the only architectures they manage. If you are looking to build such machine learning demos, well, in this video, I go through all of the tasks you can solve using pre-trained models in the Hugging Face Lab. Install PyTorch and transformers on your machine, make sure you your GPU works with CUDA or use Colab Notebooks, it's easier to deal with. And buckle up! Pipeline! The pipeline is the simplest object for doing inference and it accepts a set of tasks like conversational. The pipeline initialization will download the default model for multi turn chatbot conversation in a cache folder to be reused later. You then call the pipeline on a string of text to get a prediction for the supply task. Wait, wait, this task is actually a special case where you need to rope up your sentence input in a utility class which manages the state of the conversation for you. You can then add user input as the conversation flows and, and then call it back on the pipeline for an answer where the chat history is preserved. Need more than one prediction? Call it over an array of conversations and it will run on each item in the array. Want to run it over an entire array of conversations? Hugging Face is a solution for big dataset processing, but I'm keeping this for another video. While Hugging Face was initially dedicated to building mobile chatbots for teenagers, they slowly became known by the AI community for open sourcing their models, including the PyTorch implementation of Deepmoji, a model which assigns an emoji representing the emotion of a tweet, just slowly outgrowing their initial chatbot niche. Feel mass. This is like your smartphone autocomplete. Pass it a sentence with a masked word, a gap the model has to fill for you by suggesting a list of words using the context of surrounding words. Those MLMs or masked language models, they serve as a good building block for your NLP task as they can be fine-tuned into a wide variety of language tasks like question answering or text classification or named entity recognition. Could you have guessed Fanil is the name of a person in a document? Because apparently that's not clear for a lot of people. Run an NER pipeline to recognize entities in sentences like companies or countries or person names. It is a good companion for extracting relevant information from unstructured text like newspaper, social media posts or customer queries. Token classification. This is the parent pipeline task for NER. The NER pipeline downloads a default BERT model for token classification. But you may want to use a BERT model from the Hugging Face Hub, which was fine tuned to extract other types of tokens like dates, hospitals, or phone numbers from medical records. What? You don't know BERT? Well, you probably interact with a BERT like model every time you interact with a Google service like Google Search, Google Home, or Google Trends. Translate. The BERT architecture comprises of 24 transformer layers accounting for 350 million parameters. And remember, every time an architecture has transformer layers, it will eventually end up in the hugging face. Okay, I'm stopping. <laughs> Initially trained on mask language modeling and next sentence prediction, BERT is then fine tuned into other language tasks where it achieves almost state-of-the-art performance. Hence, you'll see a lot of BERT downloads in the following pipelines. Sentiment analysis. If you are reading customer reviews for your product, you may want to focus on the negative ones. Using the sentiment analysis pipeline will download a BERT model fine-tuned on the SST2 dataset, the Stanford Sentiment Tree Bank, with movie reviews and human annotations of their positive or negative sentiment. Perfect for capturing the wild nature of very emotionally charge customer reviews and detect the positives from the negatives. Text classification. Like token classification, this is a parent task for loading fine-tuned custom models for text classification using other labels like emotion, intent, toxicity, spam, topic, weights. Did I forget to tell you how to override the default model in the pipeline? Let's use the Roberta Emotion Classification Model. If you check the Hugging Face Hub, you can sort out models by task, dig into the model card for any of them, test it through the inference widget in the right sidebar, and then copy the string identifier of the model you want to use when you're satisfied with the output. 
Zero shot classification. What if I want to label sentences with emotions like serene, ecstatic, amazed, surprised? The preferable way of doing would be to fine tune BERT on my own text dataset using my own label. But at the start of the project, we don't have time to label a full dataset of sentences with our feelings. Also, I'm not good at identifying feelings. The only feeling I know after 10 years in the industry is pain. Using zero shot classification and not BERT but BART, it should be able to infer the semantic meaning of unseen labels during training and give it a tentative classification. While not always perfect, it's a good first step into labeling your own data. Question answering. You know the answer to your question is somewhere inside that Wikipedia page. You can ask a question to a Q&A pipeline, pass it your Wikipedia page as context that will extract the part of the context most related to your question. Table question answering. A lot of companies manage an FAQ page and you can load this into a pandas data frame. By running this data frame as context to a table question answering pipeline, BERT will answer with the correct Excel. Perfect prototype for a chatbot. Phew, that was a lot of birds. You will find this class of models under the encoder architectures. They are usually very good at natural language understanding, like emotion classification or named entity recognition. BERT is not the only one in there, but it's one you regularly see downloaded by default from a pipeline. Those models can kinda be fine-tuned for text generation by considering the last word is the last word of each sentence at each generation iteration, but this way of doing is not really optimal. Instead of training to fill masks, what if we train to predict the next word in a sentence from millions of web pages? Then you get decoder models. They specialize in generating text from left to right. And I'm pretty sure you know it's main representative because it's an acronym in the chat GPT name. Text generation. Have you tried the writing with Transformers demo? You choose to use the GPT-2 student model, write the starting point for text and let GPT-2 finish your next blog article for you. Download a GPT-like model with a text generation pipeline and do the same in Streamlit or Gradio. Decoder GPT models are the basis for a lot of text generation demos like AI Dungeon, which uses one of the largest open source GPT models, GPT-J6B, or you can fine tune GPT-Neo on your own corpus, even if right now everyone seems to be engineering those huge chat GPT prompts to emulate their writing style, but, but hey, imagine the day you can fine tune chat GPT models on your own writings. Okay, we got encoder models for NLU and decoder models for NLG. Why not both? Dirty Five, which <laughs> really sounds like a Terminator name, tries to unify both encoder natural language understanding and decoder natural language generation to map out a sequence of text to another sequence of text. Common text to text pipelines will be rewriting your text with Shakespearean style generating an open-ended answer to a question after reading all Wikipedia or translation X to Y. I should send that line of code to my American Twitter friends so they're able to translate pizza menus from French to English. You'll need to specify a model for translating from English to French as there is no default one attributed in the source code. Hence the translation. Like the previous token classification and text generation pipeline, this is an umbrella task for loading your custom model from the hub. Summarization. Time is precious. So precious, we have entire apps to summarize the most important books or newspapers. The summarization pipeline will do this for you in a Python 1 liner, taking as input a very long passage to produce a short snippet out of it. You could even create a mobile app in React Native and then query the summarization model from the hub using the official huggingface.js JavaScript library. Text-to-text -text generation. Your parent task for anything encoder-decoder related. It initially loads the T5, which does summarization for you when you prefix the input with summarize, or translation when you prefix it with translating from X to Y. Image classification. Huh? Wasn't hugging face and transformers only for building chatbots? Well, you know, when you spend way too much time pushing state-of-the-art with a particular library and then you 
want to use it on every problem in the world? Like, hmm, images. I could run transformers on it. The image classification pipeline downloads the vision transformer. It takes a URL, a path to image or a pillow image as input and classifies it using one of the thousand labels in the ImageNet classification dataset on which it was trained. Your label is not in ImageNet? Fear not. Zero shot image classification. Add a set of candidate labels like some human actions or a combination of subjects and then run the pipeline on the image for possible match image segmentation oh this cat is so cute the image segmentation pipeline uses a partner library team to download a model for object detection and then return a dictionary of labels or like like this wall or, or this wall uh, and this cat and then with a bit of pillow processing you can mask the cat out of the original image and send that to everyone Object detection. I feel this is the pseudo hello world of AI. Drawing bounding boxes around cars, passengers and lights detected by a model in autonomous driving cars dataset to reassure ourselves that a car is able to identify people. The object detection pipeline returns the coordinates of those bounding boxes, proving our image indeed contains a cat. Zero shot object detection. I wonder what breed is this cat? Maybe you could add all the cat breeds as labels for the zero shot detection and it will find it. Zero shot definitely works when asking for small cats versus big cats, but, but full breeds that may not appear as frequently in the dataset, uh, yeah, I get why that may be way harder to infer. In this case, I guess I need to fine-tune the model on the Oxford IIIT pet. Visual question answering. Let's answer the ultimate question once and for all. What is the color of that dress? Blue and black or white and gold? May the visual question answering pipeline answer us. Well, the dress color is still clearly not answered. Maybe I need to get better at prompt engineering to ask a more specific question, you know? Nah, you need to get better at processing the input image. Document question answering. You could use the visual question answering pipeline to query from a document like a big infographics or your latest salary paper. But why do this when you got Layout LM, specifically trained for document querying? The document question answering pipeline will download the model and take as context an image document to answer your question. Image to text. Too many times have I seen users save their code in an image and send it on the forum. Please. We are too lazy to use the image to text pipeline to do optical character recognition on single lines of code and convert that image back into text or use Tesseract for that matter. Save an open source maintainer's mind. Depth estimation. Depth estimation produces a grayscale image where each pixel in gray represents the distance between the point of view and the object. Applying the depth estimation pipeline to our cat image is a good way of judging whether this cat is way too close to us that we want to pet it. Video classification. How should I tag my YouTube videos for maximum reach? Like learning to build machine learning apps with over edited videos? Well, let's put this epic video as input into this video classification pipeline grade your app. There's even zero-shot video classification models in the hub. They're not implemented in pipeline mode yet, so if you want to use them, you'll need to learn how to break down a pipeline into an auto-processor and an auto-model. Feature extraction. It returns the hidden states of each transformer layer in the architecture you are using. You can then use those hidden states as features for your custom machine learning model, a bit like using transformer for automatic feature engineering. This is assuming the feature extraction on the model you are using is able to capture all of the intrinsic information of your input and that depends on the model architecture and on the dataset this was trained on. But if you're a firm believer in AutoML then feel free to open a scikit-learn model or XGBoost to the output embedding layer of the feature extraction pipeline. Audio classification. Hmm. I could run audio on transformers. Well, guess what? We have models that turn audio into image spectrograms and, and it's an image, so we've got transformer to deal with images. 
and then you get state-of-the-art results on several audio classification benchmarks. Automatic speech recognition. So, is my French accent bothering you? I should probably transcribe my videos to add subtitles, but... Yeah. The automatic speech recognition pipeline takes as input an audio file and outputs a transcript. Pipelines can have model-specific or task-specific parameters to adjust the inference behavior style. There are loads of parameters to dig into from the model card and for example you'll find the return timestamps to word or character to get timestamps for each word in the speech recognition process. Perfect for managing timings of subtitles. There are so many more things you can do using the Hugging Face ecosystem. Things you don't want to miss out on. How Hugging Face is becoming the GitHub for machine learning by providing Git repos for datasets, models, and great or streamlit demos. How you can use the Hugging Face API to fetch all models for a given task and compare them in a Python web app. Breaking down the pipeline into a tokenizer and a model to, to load models from tasks that are not yet implemented in pipelines. Sentence transfer transformers for sentence similarity or diffuser stable diffusion for text to image pipeline how to fine tune a model to build your personalized chat gpt and share it back with the community and even host it on your own using a rust server with grpc protocol for fast text generation inference well that may be for future videos and you should comment below if you're looking forward to one of them in the meantime watch this next video if you want to learn more about the machine learning ecosystem i'll see you around bye Bye.